Congratulations, you have new baby fry, but you didn't choose to breed some easy live bearer. No, you went for the challenge of egg layers like grommies or rainbow fish that produce the world's most ridiculously tiny fry ever. Heck, what do you feed them? Keep watching to find out the easy bulletproof way for making infusoria. Yum. Hi, how are you doing? I'm a gamer's wife, here with practical fish care tips for busy aquarists like you. And after all the fun I had raising my Cory catfish fry, I totally had baby fever. And I'm like, what else could I breed around here? I decided to find my little honey grommy a wifey because I've heard they're also really easy to breed. Lucky you, Pikachu. Unfortunately, honey grommy fry are super tiny. Unlike guppies and other live bears, they come out way too small to eat baby brine shrimp, crushed up flake food, and other typical fry foods. So I knew I needed to make some infusoria. What is that? Basically an archaic term referring to microorganisms like single-celled algae, amoebas, paramecium, rotifers, and other protozoans. Everyone says it's a piece of cake to make. Simply add lettuce, cut grass, or any kind of organic material to water, put it in your window with sunlight, and boom, you have infusoria four to seven days later. For attempt number one, I used aquarium water because, you know, it should already have some microorganisms in it. And then I put baby bok choy in it because, well, I'm just Asian like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, because I put the vegetable in the water raw, it stayed intact for several days and didn't break down as easily. In fact, a few days later, I noticed that the water surface got really scummy and smelled kind of gross. My other problem was that the water was too cold. We got several cloudy days in a row, so there wasn't enough sunlight or warmth. One week later, the baby bok choy started to get white fungus and mold on it. Was it even safe to use? At this point, the eggs had already been laid. I'm doomed! The newly hatched fry are going to starve to death if I don't have enough infusoria. How can I speed things up? Fortunately, I found an article that describes how fish farms make infusoria because they're constantly raising thousands and thousands of fry and they need a bulletproof recipe for creating a steady supply of infusoria that's ready at all times. Here's what I learned. First off, they set the temperature at 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Second, they cut up and blanch or boil the vegetables first to help soften and break them down faster. You can use aquarium water to start the infusoria culture, but don't use it if it contains cyclops or daphnia because they'll eat the infusoria. For aeration, stir the tub two to three times a day. By the third day, it should be cloudy with a distinct odor, which is bacteria growing. And then by the 10th day, the culture will be clear and odorless because that's when the infusoria colony has grown enough and has started to eat the bacteria. On the 20th day, the culture should be really thick with infusoria and is ready for usage. So for attempt number two, I again started with aquarium water because I don't have cyclops or daphnia in it. And then I started with some ballicinaria leaves. Just did a little trimming during my weekly water change and plopped them in there. To prevent the water from getting stagnant again, this time I added a little bit of air from an air pump for some light aeration in case I forgot to stir it. And then like you do with baby brine shrimp, I shined a desk lamp on the water 24 seven to keep the temperature nice and warm. Now my jar of water was pretty clear even by the second day, so I never saw it go super cloudy. However, you can see in this macro view that there are actually little white particles moving about and, and a detritus worm over there too. Thankfully, that second batch of infusoria came through and I was able to heavily feed my fry alternating between Hikari first bites and infusoria. Two weeks later, whew, the fry are finally big enough to eat baby brine shrimp, which I'll cover in our next week's video. If you're looking for a fun, easy fish to breed, click on the screen over here to check out my video on raising Cory catfish fry and subscribe to join our community. Don't forget to take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.